శ్రీ గురు చరణ కమలేభ్యో నమ ఫ్రమ్ టుడే సిక్స్త్ క్యాంటో బిగిన్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ బిగిన్స్ విత్ క్యూరియాసిటీ అండ్ క్వశ్చన్ ఆఫ్ పరీక్షిత్ మహారాజ్ హూ టెల్స్ హెజ్ స్పిరిచువల్ టీచర్ శ్రీ సుఖదేవ్ గోస్వామి దట్ ఓ గురుదేవా you have explained there are two paths you explained path of detachment and path of attachment path of detachment is nibruti marg in sanskrit and path of attachment is prabruti marg in sanskrit o gurudeva you explained about nibruti marg path of detachment in the second canto and told that by remaining detached to sense gratification and material affairs and performing devotional service one can reach the abode of lord brahma and from there along with lord brahma gradually go to the spiritual world and after reaching spiritual world remain with the lord you explained this very clearly in the second canto you also detailed that such a devotee following detached path goes first after their death goes first to fiery planet called vaishwanara loka to become purified burnt purified and then goes to the abode of lord brahma and goes back to godhead this is the system you explained also it is stated in the vishnu purana brahmana sahate sarve samprapte pratisanchare parasyante krutatmana pravishanti param padam you explained that very carefully that vishnu purana says that after reaching to the abode of lord brahma they see lord brahma and lord brahma performs devotional service and everybody there performing devotional service so you also perform devotional service <clears throat> when brahma dies all the people residents there also die and they go along with lord brahma to the abode of the supreme lord you ex- it is explained there so this process is this correct is this is the only process or there is more process you want to know it is true those who are karmi karma yogis means people who perform their daily duties as per the scriptures they are called karma yogis they are interested in the result and there are gyan yogis those who mental speculators they search for knowledge dry knowledge they think god is not existing there there is no god there is just a light there is no physical form of god such people called gyan yogis karma yogis and gyan yogis and then called dhyan yogis means meditators they meditate on god there are ashtanga is eight different fold yogas or many other yogas are there today many people speculate in many kind of yogas 
and there are karma kandis ritualistic performance they burn their they the desire to burn their sins all these people they cannot go to god unless they perform devotional service they all have to perform devotional service to go to god in another words karma yoga following scriptural injunctions to do their daily activities they remain short to go to god without doing devotional service they have to do devotional service to go to god gyana yoga those who think they will merge in god they will go to god and merge in him there is no physical form of god or i am god or you are god like that those who think that way they also remain short of going to god going back to god not possible they also have to perform devotional service to go to god there are dhyan yogis do meditation the levitation all that they do these class of people they also fall short to go to god because yam brahma varunendra rudra marutastun vandi devyaistavai cannot be understood by gyan yogi dhyan yogi and karma yogis they fall short even the great yogis who show magic or magic feats gymnastics meditation they cannot go to god they remain short without devotional service so karma yogis gyan yogis dhyan yogis karma kandis or any other yogi process remain short without devotional service everything has to be iced by devotional service if lord brahma the engineer creator of this universe he has to do devotional service people living in his abode they all have to do devotional service what to speak of others they all have to do devotional service parikhit mahara said further over oh, deva you had explained about pravrti marg path of enjoyment household life in the third canto that all the grahasthis means householders they have to act as per scriptures and do their household activities and after death they go to heaven you had said that because they do all scriptural deeds and at last go to heaven and this heaven is also within three world three modes because this is within the universe heaven is also in this universe is not beyond this universe beyond this universe is a spiritual world on which we are focusing on to go as devotees so these householders go to uh, heaven swarga lok which is governed by three modes of material nature three vira guna mayir bhavir ebhi sarvam idam jagat the whole universe is governed by three modes and heaven is within this universe thus they remain in the cycle of birth and death see those who are detached from material affairs tyagis they go to after their death they go to vaishwanar loka and to brahma loka and then go back to godhead but those who are householders they engaged in pleasures of this world but act as per the scriptures they go to heaven and they remain in the cycle of birth and death because heaven also has birth and death so 
Parikhit says, O Gurudeva, you also explained about sinners, that sinners go to hell and experience their suffering. You explained it very nicely and many different kinds of hell in the fifth canto ending. And you also explained about the details of the 14 planetary system of this universe. Also explained about the earth planet and so many islands and luminaries. Everything you explained. I am indebted to you. Oh spiritual master, I am very obliged to you. O oh, Gurudeva, I have one doubt. That is, Adhureha Mahabhaga Yatheva Narakan Naraha Nanogra Yatana Neyat Tanme Vyachatu Marhasi. O oh, Gurudeva, I want to know the remedy by which by following which one can avoid going to hell. I want to know that. How can one go beyond, uh, how can avoid one, how can one escape from going to hell? Because day to day, every day, some sin happen and you have to go to hell for that sin. You kill, walk, you kill an ant under foot, so you go to hell. So I want to know, O oh Gurudeva, I want to know how can that person avoid going to hell? What is the remedy which has to follow? Sri Sukhadeva Goswami said, O oh King, a human being performs sin in three ways. By using mind, by using words, and by using body. Three ways. There are three ways performing sins. And after sinning, if he is, if he or she is intelligent, performs atonement to clear up the sins while alive. Those who are not intelligent, they don't do that remedy in clearing the sins. Because they committed a sin, they got to clear it. They don't clear and after death they go to hell to clear there. <coughs> and this is all explained by Sukhadeva Goswami in the fifth canto. O king, just as a learned or expert physician diagnoses the disease and as per severity of the disease, prescribes medicine and instruction to the patient and tells immediately to start taking medicine so you can get cured. Similarly, those who are smart, intelligent, they reach a spiritual master and who immediately tells what kind of a tournament they have to perform to clear up their sins and immediately act while alive, then they don't, they avoid going to hell. That's why it is best for everyone to atone for their sins while alive. Hearing this, Parikhit Maharaj asked, O Great says, even though everyone knows sinning brings punishment, a sinner goes to hell and is punished there many in many ways. Still, person sins, even though he is punished by the government rebuked 
by people, criticized by own kinsmen, and knows that after death will go to hell, still engages in sin. Why? All the scriptures they say no, don't sin, all the sages have said don't sin, and person knows he should not sin. Why they sin? I want to know. <clears throat> Why they are so helpless and engage in sin? Even though after performing a tournament, one engages again in the sin, what is the benefit for atoning then? To this, Sri Sukhdev Goswami says, O oh, King, there are many, many kinds of sins for which there are many kinds of atonements. There are small sins and there are more severe sins. There are very severe sins. There are sins. For small sins, small atonements are there. Only scriptures and the Guru knows what kind of atonement. For example, I give you an example. For a small sin, somebody walked on a Kadasi day, circumvulated Govardhan and killed so many ants on the way, came back to the spiritual master. Oh, so many ants were killed. I did not want to kill. I jumped many of them jumped over them, but some of them are dead. I knowingly, I saw them dead. <clears throat> so the spiritual master replied, would reply, knower, okay, you drink Panchagabhya. In Sanskrit there is called Panchagabhya. The five ingredients from the cow are there. Panchagabhya includes little bit cow's dung, little bit cow's urine, some quantity, little quantity, double quantity, then urine is milk, same quantity is yogurt, same quantity is butter, clarified butter, and should be mixed with the kusha grass, is a kind of pure grass, it has to be mixed with it, and a tablespoon full to be taken on the palm and then drink it. That is the remedy for a small amount of sin. You had a desire to go around Govardhan Hill or Vrindavan, circumambulation, but some ants died he did not want to kill. That is called small sin. For a small sin, there is a small atonement. Little bit of Panchagabya once drank, you are clear from that. That is only an example. I gave you. So there are many kinds of sins, and each sin has got one kind of atonement. <clears throat> there are some more severe sins. They are gone by fasting and all auspicious days. There are some more severe severe sins. They are gone by taking bath in Ganges. There are more severe sins. Which, are, which go on charity when you give cash to a genuine, authentic charity taker, a devotee, pure devotee, who is born in a Brahmin family. You give him charity, all your sins sit on top of charity and he takes it. So, like that. There are many ways to atone for the sins. <clears throat> And atonement clears the sin. Sure, sure, sure. But after atoning for the sin, if one engages again sinning in sinning, then they are compared to elephant's bath. Elephant goes inside water, takes a very nice bath, rubbing and loitering in the water, lying down and clearing up all their dirt and dust. Very nice bath, very clean, he comes out from the river and again comes to the ground and throws dust over him. With a trunk full of dust, he throws everywhere. Makes your whole body is covered. 
takes bath very nicely, cleans up and then comes back. Dirty, goes dirty inside the river, cleans up, comes out, becomes dirty. Similarly, those who sin and atone, clean up and then go back and throw dust, means sin again. They will compare to elephant's bath. Sri Sukadev Goswami says further that, O king, since surely becomes clear by atonement, following the process, there is no doubt about it. They go away, just like you uproot, or you go in the garden and cut some bushes, with thorny bushes out, because they are impediments in the growing of the plants. So you remove them, chop them up, but they become clean. No more weeds in their garden. Uh, plants are growing. But these weeds grow up again because they were chopped from the top. Just like you take an axe and cut the tree, not from the root, but above the root. And the tree grows again. Even though tree fell, there is no more tree there because it's cut. Tree fell. Similarly, sins all burn out by performing austerity, but just a tree will grow because it did not uproot it. Tree also falls by uprooting the tree from the root. Tree also falls by cutting from the top. Similarly, atoning and then sinning is like cutting the tree from the top which grows a little more. Like cutting the weeds from the top and they grow back because the roots are there. So until the feeling from inside, feeling, craving for the sinning is uprooted, even though we atone for the sins, he will engage in sinful deeds. Therefore, uprooting is better than cutting from above the roots. <clears throat> the spiritual master, he knows. The scriptures, they know. Reading scriptures, we don't know where it is, what is written. So therefore, we go to Guru, who is like a living library. Guru should be a living library. If it's less than living library, he is not yet Guru. Even though he has two chains, unbroken chain of birth dynasty, unbroken chain of Guru dynasty. If he is not a living library, it's not that beneficial. <clears throat> Just as an expert physician, who will go to the root cause of the disease and will cure that root of the disease, not just clean up the symptoms of the disease, but not less knower, less expert physician will clean up the symptoms. For example, I give you, this body, as per Ayurvedic herbal science, is made or runs due to three things, bile, air and mucus, for example. So somebody's mucus increased, okay? It has to be in balance. Three things, three items must be in balance. But one mucus became imbalanced, so mucus increased, so body became a little sick. So his nose got clogged up and he went to doctor. Less knower doctor means not very expert doctor. Expert doctor goes to the root cause, but this doctor goes to the symptom, gives you antibiotic. All right, you take these pills, your nose will be cleared up. <laughs> but the root is, root of the disease, nose clogging up is mucus. 
But he did not clear up the mucus. He only cleaned up, cleaned up the clogged nose. Nose. You give some medicine. You take this, and your nose will clear. Okay, nose again clean. Nose clogged up is no more there. But you got throat pain after a few days. Pain inside the throat. So he went to the doctor again. Sir, my throat aches now. So he gave you some medicine to clear up the throat. After some days, some days later on, after some weeks, you go there. Oh, doctor sir, my tonsils are groaning. So he gave you some antibiotics, tonsils, or removed the tonsils. When after some days, the patient went again. Sir, I got sir, I got some fever. So he gives you medicine for fever. He, if he. Cured the mucus. There would be no more problems. So many ways, so many times when because doctor wants their bills, wants money. I had a disciple, a doctor. I asked him, you know, you know so many patients come, and then you know, <laughs> so many patients come. You know, you should be curing them. They don't need to come back. Swamiji, if we cure them all, my I will be out of business. I make sure that they get cured, but they come back with something else. They must come because then I, that's how I run my office. <laughs> that is not right. I did not like it, but what can I do? Nice devotee, anyway. <clears throat> Just by following the diet, you cannot get cured. You got to take medicine. So, doctor must find the cause of the disease. Then cure the cause, there will be no more disease left. So, expert doctor, don't cure the disease, goes to the cause of the disease. It may take few more days than curing the symptoms to cure the root of the disease. So similarly, a real spiritual master knows how to go to the root of this desire, cure that. That is, introduce devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Association of a pure devotee, following the orders of a pure devotee is called association. Not just you have to live with the pure devotee all the time, your pure devotee cannot live with you alone. There are many more people to go. So, following the orders of the spiritual master is called association with him. Reading his writings are called association of him. Thinking how he behaved and dealt with you, that thinking is called association with him. Meditating on him, his words are called association of him. So this cures the root of the disease of a sinful life. Root is removed. So the best atonement is to perform devotional service. Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Papi tapi joto chilo, hari nami udhari lo. Lord Chichetine Mahaprabhu. So, <clears throat> just as fire burns the cluster of bamboos, big bunch of bamboos, but burns from the root. Any living entity there on top of the bamboo, usually snakes, they are garbant. So that is devotional service. It burns. And don't come back again. Therefore, one should perform devotional service with full faith. And be austere, perform austerities. Be celibate, don't engage in so much, so much extravagantly 
frivolous deeds. Keep self-control. Means senses under control. Keep mind under control. And speak truthfully, read scriptures, speak only scriptures. And give charity. Keep clean inside and out all thoughts and also body, take bath. Follow all the rules of the scriptures. When crave comes for material enjoyment, try to control. These nine kinds of activities will surely keep one not engaged. The craving will be burnt out. The desire will be gone. The smell to enjoy life will be gone. One should be ideally avoid. One should ide to become ideal devotee. Avoid these eight ways. That is to think about enjoying sense gratification called smaranam. Try not to think about sense gratification. And then second one is called kirtanam. Try to not talk with somebody about the sense gratification. Listening and talking not should be done. Then third one is called Keli. Don't frivolously play with people. Not joke around. Talking about jo that joke which includes sense of sense qualification objects not should be that is called keli then is called prekhanam should not be attached to sense objects then called guhyabhashanam do not talk unknowingly to those or secretly should always be open. Don't go to solitary place to talk to about these things. Then Sankalpa, sixth one, do not become determined to enjoy sense gratification. Adhyavasaya, seventh. Adhyavasaya means making sure planning, making sure to enjoy. And eighth one is Kriyanibhruti, that engaging in sense gratification physically. These eight things must be avoided. If you avoid these eight things, you will become an ideal person. <clears throat> One must be fully determined, fixed, that I will not engage. I will not engage in any circumstance. Then how can you engage? That's why. <clears throat> That is called self-control. I will not engage. It will become fixed. That is called self-control. And that comes from devotional service. Self-control, power, potency, that's energy, the capacity to become self-controlled 
comes from devotional service. So Guru introduces the devotional service <coughs> and that removes censure. <coughs> Kechit Kevalaya Bhaktya Kechit Kevalaya Bhaktya Vasudeva Parayana Very rare to find such people. Very rare, very difficult to find. Adam Dhanvanti Kartrena Nihara Vil Bhaskara There are very rare people who will be sincerely engaged in devotional service and their all sins become burnt that they don't engage in sinful deed again. Their sins, they go, because the darkness of ignorance is gone from inside, just like sun rises and a darkness is gone or fog is cleared. Similarly, they don't engage. That is the best atonement is to perform devotional service sincerely. Be honest, not a showboat. Showboat becomes more grievously sinful. More grievous punishment awaits for them than normal sinners. There are two ways to atone sin the best way. That is to engage in devotional service to please the Supreme Lord under the guidance of a spiritual master or to engage in serving, pleasing the spiritual master. I remember this. Somehow or other I was chastising my devotee Nanda Kumar. For some reason I forget long ago. He said, Swamiji, I am I know I am not sincere in my devotional life. He was very sincere though. I am not so sincere. Because I am born in such a background. I have no faith in this process, Swamiji. But when I die, God will know or some authority who will check me there after my death. They will know that I pleased, I served my a pure devotee. I served a pure devotee with my whole heart. Swamiji, you are the only one person on this planet earth I trust. He said that. Very smart man. He did the editing work for me. Several volumes of Bhagavatam and many other books. Very good man. He said that, Swamiji, when I die, some authority or God will know that I did not trust him, but I served sincerely a pure devotee of him. You, Swamiji, at least I will get a chance after my death. What a wonderful way. Here Sukadev Goswami says, either you perform devotional service, if you fall short somewhere, you are not sure you are going doing correct, then you serve a pure devotee, so he remains pleased with you. That service you must do. Then uh, the desire to do sins will be burnt. <clears throat> All the great sages and saintly people have walked on this path performing devotional service or pleasing the spiritual master. All the scriptures explain these two paths. <clears throat> so, it is very important. <clears throat> devotional path is only beneficial. It can only bring benefit. Madhuram madhure bhyopi mangale bhyopi mangalam is very auspicious and very sweet. There is no misery, there is no upsetness, there is no bitterness. Yes, there is. Austerities are performed or Guru chastises you to correct yourself when you go wrong. Something like that. So this is not a problem. Problem is there after death. We don't want to face that problem. This is some all. Some, I became crooked, then I got to uh, get straightened. But Guru straightens me because he loves me. If Guru loves you, he will not let you go wrong. Not possible. I remember this. Somebody told me that, Swamiji, your work is getting done. Why you have to chastise somebody? Your work is getting done. They are doing work. 
They're doing all your work is getting done in their temple. <laughs> See, that's what they do. And they're telling me this. Because God many disciples and he's telling me this. See, he got many disciples. He's telling me this. So no, I will not let him go wrong. I don't care about my work done. Somebody else can do that work. I'll pay some person to get that work done. But I want my man to be correct. So God knows that I am correcting him. I'm not letting him go wrong. God knows that I love him. I will not let him go wrong. And he, when he dies, he goes to God. He does not go fall somewhere else. Like that. <clears throat> o King, Sudhir Goswami continues, Just as a clay pot filled with liquor cannot be cleaned in many river water, as, lo as more you wash, as much as you wash, it will not be clear. Similarly, those who perform atonements and go back again sinning, they cannot be very clear, very, very quickly cleaned. <clears throat> very difficult to clean a person who is disfixed against God. Not possible. Prais Chittani Chachiranani Narayan Parang Mukham Nishpunanti Rajendra Sura Kumbha Mivapaga Very difficult. Not possible. When a clay pot is filled with liquor, after a few days you take, dump the liquor from the clay pot and take it to the Ganges and wash it. Take it to that river, wash it. Take it to this water, wash it. Take it to that tap pond, wash it. That tap, water tap, you wash it. It will still stink. Similarly, those who do not have faith in spiritual path, very difficult to clean. <clears throat> but one who engages in devotional service under the guidance of a spiritual master, perfect spiritual master, their bumblebee-like mind becomes stuck with the lotus flower-like lotus feet of the Lord and don't come out. They become fixed. If they become fixed, where is the chance for them to do any more sin? There is no time. They become purified thoroughly. Thank you very much.